Hello there, this is Kat and Liz from the Lighthearts UK Mental Health Project. Um, today we're going to be speaking a little bit about diet and how it affects um, mental health and how it can particularly affect um, anxiousness and low mood. So um, basically there's a lot of scientific research about how diet can affect our physical health. And now there seems to be a lot of um, research that's coming forward that talks about how diet can affect our hormone levels and uh, how it can affect our mental health. Um, so Liz, uh, as you're working uh, as an NHS psychiatric nurse, um, is this something that comes across quite a lot when you're dealing with some of your clients and uh, some of the patients that you deal with in the mental health community? Yeah, I think increasingly it's becoming more evident that people can have an influence on their mental state and how much their mental state's uh, linked to their physical well-being. So we're seeing that connection uh, perhaps more often in people uh, in their later life. Um, but certainly it's one of the things that we have to consider when we're doing an assessment. So if somebody's experiencing anxiety and low mood, before we do anything else, we have to check with the GP um, about their physical health. Um, and the physical health issues that can influence mood can be things like um, if they have thyroid problems, if they have um, problems with um, how they metabolize food, if they're in any pain, uh, so things like that are an issue. Um, and obviously what's linked with that obviously is diet. Um, and we're seeing increasingly that people who complain of poor sleep, we one of the things that we would ask in the first instance is about their sleep hygiene. And I think some of that's been covered in some of the other weeks that we've done, some of the other information that we've been given, but people who you know, and I was one of them who would often go to bed with an enormous mug of coffee um, and wonder why I was, you know, perhaps having a little bit of heart palpitation. Um, issues like that can be um, something that we, we can focus on for people. Just a small change in what they do before they go to bed could make a big difference because caffeine, coffee, it's uh, a chemical. It's something you're putting into your body that changes how your body feels. And so, yeah, we, we, we would be thinking about diet. We would be thinking about stimulants that people are using. Um, and one of the stimulants that, that has been, been uh, in the news a lot recently is sugar. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's, and, it's getting a lot of press right now. Sugar is the new fat, <laughs> it would seem. Um, yeah, because it's, we know that there's increasing evidence to suggest that it's actually quite toxic. Um, and that it, in high levels it can cause so many other problems, uh, physical, physiological problems, um, but also how it has an effect on your mental health. Uh, we know that a high sugar, high carbohydrate diet can make you feel quite lethargic. And if you're already bet battling with lethargy because your mood is low, that's not going to help. Um, and I know that we've talked very often, haven't we, about our own diets and how changes to our diet have made huge differences in how we feel and mm -hmm. although that's you know that's that's subjective but I think that's based on very um, sound uh, research um, um, of late this is this is the new kind of thing is about how the quantity of sugar that people are, are consuming how that has uh, uh, an influence on people's mood and well-being and that's really difficult actually for people who are dealing with um, anxiousness and low mood and stress, one of the things that um, I know being a sufferer myself is what I used to do was when I was feeling a bit anxious or worried, the thing I would do was buy a couple of custard tarts mm. and, yeah. um, <laughs> and chow down on that. And yeah. it felt wonderful at the time. Yeah. But then straight after that, obviously, I was getting a great big hit of sugar which an hour or so later I would then have an enormous crash from, yeah. which then would cause irritability, um, low mood. It would cause, um, yeah, huge mood swings, mm. which, of course, then inevitably 
increases your stress and anxiousness because you're just in that kind of cycle yeah absolutely and um i think that's that's one of the really difficult things um that people have to deal with really when they've got uh when they're dealing with their diet with their mental health and it's one of the things that we really try and um and explain to people that we we don't want people to to go on you know in quotation marks a diet because mm. when you're struggling with mental health having to deal with going on a diet as, as well and dealing with cravings or denial or all these feelings that also uh, come up with eating disorders or just poor diet yeah. is feelings of guilt feelings of um you feel oh i've got a lack of willpower um it makes you hate your appearance perhaps it makes you feel anxious it makes you it just get, it makes you hate yourself sometimes that you can't get your diet under control yeah. and that just kind of exacerbates any mental health issues that you might be having so whenever we whenever we talk about diet we always make sure don't we that we don't say to people go on a diet we just say just cut down hmm. on, on the things that cause that can cause mood swings so sugar and caffeine are the biggest ones and things like fizzy drinks and and you know drink drinking caffeine any time after you know midday or early afternoon just increases that problem of sleeping and insomnia and that of course when you're not getting good sleep of course is also um you know exacerbating any mental health issues you have as well yeah, so absolutely and i think we you know we're a long way for most people um you know food isn't fuel food is very emotive uh, you know we we attribute uh so many things in terms of how we feel to what we eat you know we associate comfort eating with feeling better and as you say it's that kind of immediate yeah sense of comfort so you sit down you have a donut and it's just like i need this i deserve this i should have this because this makes me feel better and of course it does while you're eating it and then afterwards you know we, we've all had that feeling of overwhelming guilt but i think it's i it's not really for me to sit here and say to people what they should and shouldn't eat but it is worth asking people to to just consider when they do eat certain things how they feel afterwards because i think that's the best way to, to, to consider how to moderate your diet to best meet your psychological and physical physiological needs you know if yeah. just see how you feel after you eat certain things see how you feel after you have that cup of coffee um, at that time in that evening and if you don't do that the following evening does it make a difference and see how it is for you it is you know it, it's trying to find that kind of bespoke diet that suits you a way of eating I mean I'm the same I don't like that word because I think it just that word in itself just uh, creates a, an agenda, doesn't it? If you use the word diet, but so it's just really about thinking, thinking about what you eat when when you can. Just give it some thought. Think about what you're putting in your body when you're putting it in your body, and whether if you have something different, you feel different. So if you're eating, you know, um, if you go and have a vegetarian meal, that's low carb and that's full of vegetables do you feel better that evening than you did when the night before you had a pasta carbonara or something do you know what i mean it's just just kind of suck it and see literally see what yeah how that feels and i think um you know if we're uh, because we're using the kind of um diary um uh, technique to try and get out feelings that perhaps people when they're doing their um journaling and and finding out how they feel about certain things that they could actually talk about their feelings after eating and actually write it down say yeah, i had yeah. this today oh. and then afterwards i felt this and very soon you can see a pattern in things which is one of the reasons i for, for many years i uh, i suffered from a binge eating disorder and i realized that after 30 years the thing that used to make me binge was after having eaten sugar mm. and after having eaten sugar of any type be it chocolate cake biscuits uh any anything that contained sugar mm. i could guarantee that 
after having eaten it, after an hour, I would want more and more and more. Mm. And I suddenly got to a point when I just, um, well, the turning point, actually, which was very interesting, was it didn't matter how many times someone told me that it was bad for my body. It was what happened was I read a book and it actually told me, would you treat your best friend the way you treat your body? Mm. And I, it suddenly clicked with me because I thought about you and I thought, I would never abuse you in any way. I would never be horrible to you anyway. I would never want to cause you harm. Mm. And yet I was doing that yeah. to myself every day. And yeah. it suddenly made me realize that we don't treasure our bodies as we should. We, our bodies do the most amazing uh, automatic responses for us all the time. Breathing, our lungs, our hearts, our livers, uh, lymph glands there's so many mm. different processes going on in our bodies and we are completely unaware of all of it mm. but one of the ways that we can help it to work is to feed it properly and to not abuse it and and in doing so amazingly the better we feel physically mm. the better we feel mentally yeah. And it can cause a huge, I mean, eating well can completely transform your life. I no longer suffer from a binge eating disorder mm. because I I said, okay, no more sugar for me. Yeah. I no longer have feelings of guilt or low self-esteem or worthlessness or uh, I don't feel like I have a lack of willpower anymore. I suddenly realized that actually... I'm I'm all right and all I needed to do is actually just cut out sugar and I'm not crazy about it I'm not you know Gwyneth Pouch oh, oh my god I'm never <laughs> touching anything bad ever again mm. I've had I you know I've had the odd thing here and there but I have noticed that when if I have had something that's on the sweet side mm. I feel bad afterwards mm. and after a while I just go oh, I don't want to do that to myself yeah. And this this is one of the things. Also, another thing that is really, really um, very bad for mental health is alcohol. Mm. And amazingly, we all we, it's all this kind of uh, we've got into this culture now of it's not just down the pub. Now it's got to the stage of, oh, I'm having a nice glass of wine at the end of the day. Mm. And this is a slippery slope because actually wine contains huge amounts of sugar and that can cause big crashes yeah and it's also a depressant you know yeah. alcohol is a it, 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 it although you you feel like it's making you feel better it is actually technically you know depressing your mood um and it's it's what we call in the trade self-medicating you know when things are really really rubbish and you feel crap you go home and you have you know you have a large glass of wine because it's going to make you feel better um so but i think i think the point that you made about treating how you treat yourself compared to how you treat others um i had a similar situation with regards to that where my therapist pointed out to me uh, when i was making a lovely meal for my family um during that process i was stuffing my face with toast um, and then by the time the dinner was done, I didn't want to eat it because I'd eaten so much toast. And she said to me, would you feed your family toast? You know, you're, you're making a, a meal, a really nice home cooked meal for your family. But you don't give yourself the same lovely food. You're, you know, you're eating something else that you wouldn't give them. So and I, and I had that same kind of, do you know what? That's that's actually right. I'm filling my body full of sort of white bread and butter because it makes me feel good and it's kind of that instant gratification but I wouldn't give that to my family I wouldn't dream of it that's not good nutrition that's not good nourishment that's not good fuel so it's that same thing it's about giving your giving yourself a an opportunity to sort of sit back and think hang on what what am I putting in my body am I treating my body with the same respect that I treat my family or that I you know would I do that to my family would I put that in them you know it's those kind of questions isn't it it's about just just maybe thinking a little bit more about what you're eating 
that's that's basically yeah. what we're saying think about what you're eating and what possible impact that has on your body yeah and also i think that that what you said there is a very uh important point because uh, as uh human beings we have the capacity to love other people and with our families and our friends that's what we naturally do mm. we we feel love towards others and so therefore feed them well mm. and yet to ourselves we should show ourselves the same sort of love as well absolutely but that's kind of um, hard sometimes i think and i think we don't realize um i think a lot of us don't realize maybe that that we're not uh addressing our own needs too busy too busy worrying about you know everybody else making sure they're all okay and that sometimes is the kind of you know when you've unpeeled the onion that's what you're left with um yeah. and it, again it sounds like we're sort of talking about something quite simple and straightforward it's about you know eating better and eating healthy but as you quite rightly say actually that can be quite a fundamental step to to being more uh, well holistically or, you know from inside and out and and a good place to start it's something simple that you can do um you know just just think about what you're eating think about how that makes you feel have a little look at some of the um the good uh, evidence-based research out there the uh, royal college of psychiatry website on healthy eating in psychiatry is really good i think we're going to put the or you will i don't know how to do it you're going to put the link up <laughs> um uh, and that's that's good so you know go to some trusted websites that make reference to mental health good good eating and good mental health and the um uh, the ways that you can try and achieve that and just just think about it i think that's what we've that's what we're saying here isn't it just think about what possibly is going on for you and whether you can make small changes just reducing the amount of sugar maybe just just having one less cup of coffee and maybe not quite so late at night maybe drinking a little bit more water and having some oily fish during the week you know just a few little simple things might make a, a, a quite a significant difference to you yeah and i think that's another good point about websites because at the moment there are swathes of websites that talk about this thing called clean eating mm. and i want people to be really really wary of surfing the internet and coming up with these sites i, I think some of them are very very dangerous clean eating is basically people cutting out nearly everything from their diet and just being left with like fruit raw fruit and vegetables and I'm really, really against that. I really, for me, I just think you just need to be everything in moderation. There's that old saying, just have everything in moderation. Yeah. It's okay to have bits and bobs here and there. But for God's sake, don't cut out stuff from your diet, especially not if you're on any medication, mm. especially not if you've got any physical problems, because if you cut stuff out, you might actually be losing very vital vitamins that yeah. might actually make you even iller. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I find it really worrying to see people who are not nutritionists mm. talking about this clean eating and professing to be to be experts on it. Mm. Uh, we can say categorically, we are not experts in nutrition, but we do understand how how diet affects mental health. Yeah. And and our our mantra is like just moderate everything. Mm. Just make sure that you have a good balanced diet with all the food groups, with you know carbs and fiber, and you know and you can have bread and this and that and the other if if that's what you you need to. You know and as well like people have diabetes, so they have to be careful of, of certain levels of sugar as well and. Yeah. You know, if you're worried at all, always go and see your GP and say, look, I, I want to do this. I want to start eating in a healthy and moderate manner. Yeah. And your GP can help you as well. And, yeah. and I think, yeah, just to be just to be balanced and don't get all crazy and go, oh, my God, I've got to do this. And because the minute you set the minute you set yourself up to do a diet, you're going to fail mm. because diets that's what diets do diets are just set people up to fail and if you're if you've got a, a mental health issue 
you're you're going to be feeling very kind of shaky anyway mm. and if you set yourself up for failure you're going to feel a million times worse afterwards because you're just going to beat yourself up with it you've just got another thing to beat yourself up with and going mm. i've got no willpower i'm so awful blah 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 i can't stick with anything don't do it to yourself mm. don't do it to yourself instead of going for that third or fourth biscuit which is what i used to do mm -hmm. just go for the one and see if you can stick at one mm -hmm. and see how you feel afterwards it's just about cutting the cutting the rubbishy food out of your life and leaving everything else yeah, there absolutely and there is there is some good guidance the nhs choices websites are fantastic and they will be very clear and they're not trying to make a profit um you know that's the, the biggest worry about a lot of these sort of websites that you visit that are promoting these sorts of diet invariably there's a book attached to it or there's some body who who is a prof, you know self progressed uh expert um and there's some agenda there like you say just if you eat moderately you eat a little bit of everything that certainly is what the current um research supports is not you know there, there should be no one or the other end of the spectrum um, but there are things that you can maybe try introducing that might, you know, give you a little bit of a boost you might actually quite like, you know, might be something to replace something that you do like, um, that perhaps isn't so good for you, that doesn't help very much if you've identified that, you know, you might be able to replace some foods with other things. Um, so again, it's just, just about, like you say, being more mindful of that when you're keeping the diary, seeing if you can see any correlation between what your uh eat what you've eaten at that point and how your mood is and if you see that happening then maybe make some changes with some things that you feel you know that you'd like to try absolutely well thanks very much for that lizzie and uh i have to say i'm absolutely starving now thinking about all of that so. <laughs> but i won't be going for a custard tart option <laughs> No, no, my hand is not in a bag of bull teasers. <laughs> <laughs> thanks very much, Liz. Okay, thanks.